Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a July wrap up. Um, I read 12 books this month, which is probably the best that I've had this year. So I'm really excited for this video. Loved almost everything that I read this month. I had a few that were a little bit um, underwhelming for me, but overall it was a really great reading month and I'm super excited. So before we get into it, I'll show what I'm drinking today. As promised, I'm not going to show a beer from my local brewery today, <laughs> um, even though I love them. This one is Goose Island 312. I'm pretty sure you can get this everywhere in the US. Um, I might be wrong, I'm sorry. But it's an urban wheat ale, 4.2%, uh, described as bright, lemony, and a bit hazy. I think I had this one like years ago, but let's give it a try. It's good. I'm not mad at it. It's kind of like like a light beer, like a Coors Light or something, but it has like a little bit of like more depth and um, flavor, I guess. So yeah, I really like that. Um, it seems like a pretty chill, easy drinking beer. Okay, so let's get into the wrap up. So the first book I wanna talk about is The Vanishing Half. If you don't know already, this book is everywhere, so I'm sure you kind of have a general sense of what it's about. It follows two sisters from this small Southern black community. And eventually as they become teenagers, they split apart and they end up living very different lives. One of them lives in that same town uh, with her daughter. The other one secretly passes as a white woman and lives in a different town and you eventually see how their families come together and bring the sisters back to each other. I think Britt Bennett poses a lot of really great questions about identity and race and I think this is a great book for discussion. Funny thing, I'm in two book clubs and it's our August pick for one of the book clubs and our September pick for the other book club and so I'll be talking about this book a ton in the next two months um, so I'm, I'm excited to, to talk about it and yeah, I give it five stars. I really love it. I think everyone should read it. And I'm so glad that it's getting so much support from readers and it's doing super well. I know it's coming to uh, HBO soon, so I can't wait to see how they adapt it. But yeah, highly recommend this one. I definitely see it being in my top 10, probably my top five of the year. So yeah, definitely pick that one up. So next I listened to Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Frazier and I really like this book. I give it four stars. It follows an 18 year old and she's pregnant and she's a pizza delivery girl. And she ends up delivering pizza to this woman named Jenny, and her son requires pickles to be on his pizza. The unnamed narrator, she goes out of her way to make sure that pickles are on this woman's pizza, and she ends up becoming obsessed with her. And you realize why through her interactions with her family and her boyfriend, and she's grieving the loss of her recently uh, deceased father, who was an alcoholic. And so as the book progresses, it's very, there's like a lot of funny scenes, but it ends up getting um, a lot more complex than I was even expecting. I didn't really know what I was getting into with this book uh, because all I really knew was that the pizza delivery girl gets obsessed with a woman. Um, but this book is so good and I, it's a stunning debut novel. I can't wait to see what she does next. I think the, the prose is super sharp and I really liked reading it, or I guess listening to it. And I kind of wish I did read it because I think I want to take my time with it a little bit more. And yeah, I don't know. I just really liked it. Whenever I really love a book like that, I kind of wish I'd read it instead of listening to it. So super quick read as well. So not too big of a time commitment and I would definitely check it out. And also the cover on that one is super cool. I love it. Uh, yeah. And so next I read uh, Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. I'll put in the cards my uh, full review of this book, but I absolutely loved it. I give it four and a half stars. Um, it's frequently compared to Sally Rooney, which is expected. Uh, the book follows a 22 year old named Ava. She gets in involved in a love triangle with a man and a woman while she is teaching English to children in Hong Kong. She covers so many topics here through the lens of, you know, this love triangle of sorts, but she really dissects these characters so well and provides so many funny like insights about language, given, you know, Ava is an English teacher. Uh, she really parses through what people are saying to each other and why we say certain things. And I just thought it was so funny and insightful. And it talks a lot about power imbalances in relationships and how that affects the narrator and how she learns what she wants through those experiences as a young millennial. And so, yeah, I really love this book. For full thoughts, um, check out my other video. But yeah, I highly recommend this one, especially if you like Sally Rooney. It's very, you know, in the in the characters' heads and, you know, discussing relationships that are complex and kind of weird. And so, yeah, I, if you like those, I'm pretty certain that you're gonna like this one too. Next, I read Good Talk by Mira Jacob. And this is a graphic memoir, so it's told in conversations. And so it flies by, but it's so good. And I think it's such an accessible way of thinking about race in America. And I think some of the most critical conversations within this memoir are those that she has with her six-year-old son, in which he is wondering why things are the way they are, um, you know, around the Trump election. And she has to figure out a way to tell him these things in a way that he'll understand and it's not too heavy for him. You kind of learn in an accessible way, you know, critical aspects about racism in America and why things are the way they are 
and you know the difficulty of living as a non-white person in America and so yeah I just thought it was so good and some parts are really funny and she also you know has conversations with her family throughout her life that inform her conversations with her son and so I just thought it was such a brilliant way of doing a memoir and I hadn't really even like heard about graphic memoirs before I don't know I've been missing out I guess but I really want to try more in this genre because I really enjoyed this and so yeah it's very short I, I flew through this one and so I highly recommend it I think everyone should read this book as well uh yeah I learned a lot and had a great time reading it next I read Pew by Catherine Lacey and I was so excited for this book uh so the premise is basically there's a person that comes to this town and they're found sleeping on a church pew and so the t people in the town end up calling this person Pew and people in this community cannot figure out what this person's age gender or race is and so the people in the town start to get really conflicted and you know frustrated about trying to figure out what this person is and so the book is essentially a question of identity and why people feel the need to categorize people in certain ways and so i loved that idea however i think the plot was just a little bit too boring for me and i so i guess in execution i didn't like this book as much because a lot of the characters have conversations with pew and pew doesn't really respond to them they just think in their heads and you know kind of react to what they're hearing and so a lot of these people are just confessing different secrets about themselves to pew and it gets very repetitive like those confessions and so when i was midway through it i was like okay what's the point of this like, like i see where where the author is going with this but it just didn't completely work for me and the ending was interesting it, it all leads up to this event that i won't go into uh but it just still didn't do it for me that much i i don't, I don't know i think for some people, I've seen some reviews from friends on Bookstagram and Goodreads that really like this book. So I would highly recommend checking it out because I think it's an important discussion and thought experiment to have about why we think about identity in this way. But yeah, I just think the plot was really slow and boring and I wish there was a little bit more to it. So I gave it three stars, but I do want to read more of Catherine Lacey's work because I really liked her writing throughout. I think she's a really creative writer and I liked her style. So. Yeah, I'll probably check out more from her, but uh, I would still give it a shot if that sounds interesting to you. So next I listened to All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson, and I think this is a great audiobook. It's a young adult memoir about George M. Johnson's experience growing up as a Black queer person, and so I just thought it was so good. Each essay is basically a different event in his life that he recounts, and then at, near the end he kind of tells the reader what he wants you to get from the story, and I think it's such an accessible way for, you know, young adult audiences to understand his message, and I just think it's so important. It's also a quick listen, and he narrates it really well, and I loved hearing him tell his story, so I highly recommend this one too. Next, I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, and I picked this one up because Kat from Paperback Dreams was um, so excited and loved this book and I don't usually read romances ever and in that video she had said that she doesn't really re read romances either because she either loves them or absolutely hates them and I'm not really you know drawn to the genre particularly but I love this one and I'm so glad I gave it a chance because this one while it is a romance and it's kind of cheesy at times it's such a joy to read and it was such a nice light read during this time so I recommend it for that alone but also Talia Hibbert through this romance she you know tackles some complex issues um chloe brown the main character she suffers from chronic pain and so one day she almost gets hit by a car and this leads her to realize that life is short and she wants to change the way she um, approaches life i guess and so she makes a list like a to-do list of things she wants to do to get out of her shell and one of those is moving out of her family's mansion and so she moves into an apartment and she becomes enemies with redford morgan who she ends up falling in love with um and yeah i just thought it was so good and i was so riveted by this and it was funny and i just loved chloe brown and red as a character uh it's just so good and it was really heartwarming and when things got kind of dicey in the relationship i felt like the stakes were high like even though i knew that they were gonna end up being together because it's a romance book i was you know feeling the, the pain that they were each going through so yeah i was definitely invested in this i gave it four stars because i do think that it is a little long like some of the you know sexy scenes and stuff I guess that got kind of repetitive towards the end and I kind of got the point and so I wanted it to wrap up a little bit sooner but I did really enjoy this so if you do like romances definitely pick this one up if you haven't already yeah I was really surprised by this and so I might check out some more romances down the line next I read and listened to After Dark by Haruki Murakami and I had said in a recent video that I wanted to read Murakami and I was gonna start with the Wind Up Bird Chronicle but I had a friend his name's Victor his Instagram handle is at literary thrills he's awesome go follow him 
Um, he had said that he started with After Dark recently and he loved it. And so I wanted to start with that one too because it's shorter and he said he really liked the, the aspect of it being set over the course of the night and I was drawn to that concept too. And so I'm not even going to go into the plot of this book because I guess it's kind of common in Murakami fashion that things are just wild and kind of out there. And so it'd be hard for me to kind of summarize exactly what this book is about. But basically it does follow this girl over the course of a night and people that she interacts with. And it presents a lot of interesting questions about why things change during the night and why people's behaviors change and why things just feel and we perceive them to be different. And I love that running theme throughout. And he uses this really cool narrative style of basically putting you like in the shoes of a camera lens. So it feels like you're reading a script. There's this one part in which we're watching, I guess, a girl sleep. Murakami describes it as like the camera lens changing angles and seeing her sleeping. And it's just, a he kind of uses this throughout the whole book. And yeah, I don't know, this book is so weird. I'm still kind of unpacking what happened, but I highly recommend it. If you um, like Murakami, I would think this would be a good one. I know it's not talked about as much as others, but it's super short. And so I think if you haven't read Murakami, like myself, this is a good one to start and see if you kind of like his style. Yeah, I can't wait to read more from him. And I recommend this one. I gave it four stars. I'm like really surprised at how many books I read. I'm like going through so many. I feel like I'm talking for very long. But um, yeah, so next I've read Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And uh, this one wasn't my favorite. I mean, it was a fun read. It's about a woman who gets a letter basically from her cousin who says that she's being poisoned by her husband and this mansion. So long story short, she goes and tries to see what's going on with her cousin and she gets trapped in this mansion um, and weird things are going on with like mushrooms and the vibes are weird, it's creepy. So yeah, it's like definitely relies on those gothic tropes, but I just didn't really love this one that much. I really liked the slow burn and I was really hoping it would lead up to something like crazy and cool, but I thought it was rushed near the end and I just wasn't completely satisfied. I'm already kind of forgetting exactly what happened at the end because I just didn't, I wasn't really that invested in the characters. I didn't feel like the stakes were that high. So yeah, I don't know. I gave this one three stars. I thought it was fun and I was, you know, kind of glued to it, but I just wasn't completely blown away. But yeah, so I was really kind of bummed. I do think that, I mean, I wasn't scared by this book at all and I just, I wonder if I don't really like gothic tropes in horror. Yeah, but I must say, I'm so glad that it's a horror book by a Mexican female author that's, you know, doing so well because I feel like horror is very whitewashed. Um, I mean, Stephen King kind of like takes over like horror shelves in many bookstores. So I'm just glad that a book by a female Mexican author is doing so well. Okay, next, this book, How Much of These Hills is Gold by C. Pam Jang. It is so good. I read this one for another book club I'm in and I was blown away by it. I love this book because it gets progressively better with each page and so as I was initially starting it, I was already really into it. It follows these two um, siblings, they're Chinese American, they're 11 and 12 years old, and they're trying to find a place to bury their father who recently passed. And so you follow that journey. And as the book goes on, you learn more about the family dynamic. I should say this book is set around the gold rush. And so it's basically like a Western. And so it's really, I never really read Westerns, but I love this book so much, it's so good. So it really feels like a big grand journey. It's a pretty short book, I guess. It's I think like less than 300 pages, but it feels like you go through so much with these characters because there's so much, you know, devastation, but there's also some hope to it. And there's also some light moments. And so I just really loved it. There's this one chapter in the middle of the book that I really feel like is the crux of it. And it made me love this book like so much more than I already was. And it really made it for me. And I was so excited to have a book that near the middle, something happens and then it just completely floors you and I, I don't know it was just such an interesting thing for me I wasn't expecting that chapter to come and I loved it and it was so necessary to the plot I don't know I feel like I'm ranting about this book but it's just so good and I highly recommend it it's a debut novel too I feel like there's been so many good debut novels this year yeah and this one was shortlisted or I wish this one was long listed for the booker and I hope it is shortlisted because it's that good and I just wish her all the success. I can't wait to read what she writes next because this one was such like an epic story that I just, I don't know how she's going to top this because it's just that good. So yeah, I'm eagerly awaiting her next book and yeah, please pick this one up. It's so good. All right, we're almost done y'all. Okay, so next I read Fraternity by Benjamin Nugent and this one really surprised me. I liked it a lot and it follows this one fraternity and different characters within it and different stories and events that happen to them. And I think each story is just so good and very tightly written. You can tell there's a lot of effort put into each line because it's so concise. And so you can tell he, you know, went through these stories with a fine tooth comb and really 
only put what was necessary in it. You know, it's all set around a fraternity, so you can expect, you know, the debauchery. He uses these stories to discuss masculinity and sexuality and, you know, kind of dissect the fraternity dynamic. And I just thought all these characters were so interesting. And we only are with them for a short number of pages, but he really flushes out their complexities in a short amount of time. And I just thought it was so good. I was so surprised, but I can't wait to read more from him. I haven't seen this one around too much, but I do know that the first story in this collection is generally like acclaimed, I guess. Uh, it's called God and I, <laughs> I see why. It's my favorite story of the collection, but I do think that they're all really great. This book reminded me a lot of Otessa Moshbeg and basically like her writing style of, you know, having these concise sentences that are kind of funny and dark. And so if you like Otessa Moshbeg, I would maybe try this one out. I know you might be turned off by being set in a fraternity, like I kind of was, but uh, he, it's not like a bro -y book, I guess. It made me think a lot. And there's this one story in the middle that even has like some magical realism in it that I was so surprised by. It's the only one that has that, but yeah, I don't know. This book is just so surprising for me and that's why I keep talking about it. But yeah, I recommend it for sure. So finally, I read, well, I almost read We Are Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby. I have like 50 minutes left, so I figured I would just talk about it in this video because I'll probably finish it today or tomorrow. But I love it. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of Samantha Irby. I'll read anything she writes. And in each essay, she's very self-deprecating and hilarious, but it's also like a very heartwarming read for some reason. Like it just feels like a comfort, like like listening to her talk about things. Like I just, I love, you know, doing chores around the house and listening to her say funny stuff to me basically. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for like a lighthearted essay collection that's very funny, this one actually talks about some, you know, more deeper issues than in Wow No Thank You, which I recently read too. It's just such a great read or listen and I highly recommend checking out her audiobooks because she narrates them and she has a really, I just like hearing her tell her stories, but I can't wait to read her first book too because I know it's going to be just as good. Oh and finally, I'm like basically done with this book so I'll just mention it. It's um, Her Body and Other Parties. I have like two stories left and I really like this. I do prefer her memoir in the dream house, but I really like her writing style and the area in which she writes. Basically a queer horror, that's like my jam. I really dig this collection. I do think that some stories are better than others or like I, I like certain ones more than others. But yeah, I think it's a strong collection. It's super original and I just, I think her mind is brilliant. I wanna know what her next project is gonna be because I feel like it's gonna be wild and original, it's to be expected from her. She's just an author that I'm really excited about. And yeah, I recommend checking her out if you haven't already. So that about does it for this month. This was a lot of books I just talked about. If you pick up any of these books based on my recommendation, I really hope you like them. And until next time, cheers.